Well, right now we're confronted with a combination of a very large wave of anti-labor sentiment that's been pumped up uh, beginning in the States and now spreading to Canada, uh, primarily by a group of billionaires who have decided that they would be better off if there were no labor unions. What other country on the planet gives corporations a tax break if they move jobs out of the country? Tell me it. Does, does Germany give you a tax break if you leave Germany? Does France? Does China? Does Japan? Does Brazil? Which country gives you a tax break if you leave the country? Only one. United States of America. The issue of union corruption, I believe, as Congressman McCle or Senator McClellan said during the hearings on the Landon Griffin Act, he said compulsion and corruption go hand in hand. And let's explore and unpack that just a little bit, because what Senator McClellan said in that instance is union corruption, I believe, is a creation of giving union officials the power to compel people to join them. You've got cops, firemen, paramedics out there doing the job for minimum wage. How many of those teachers have a master's degree in education? How many of them have been, have been on the job for 20 years? How many of those cops are laying down their life? How many of those firemen are laying down their life going into a fire or protecting the community as a law enforcement officer and their paramedics that are out there, this is pretty sin. This is sinful. It really is. The issue of unions causing job losses is absolutely ridiculous and, and, of, and of, in, of injuring the economy. The fact of the matter is that as unions are successful in driving wages up and benefits up, there's a corresponding increase in wages and benefits in non-union workplaces. In my opinion, liberty. People should not have to join any organization as a matter of force. No one should have to join a union because they want a job. They want to go work for that company and they want to join a union or form a union, have at it. You know, that's your right. But you should not have to pay dues, pay part of your salary to an organization that you may not necessarily agree with. Uh, out in the Midwest where I'm from in Oklahoma, it used to be a Democratic state, now it's a solid red state. Uh, but you have uh, people who own the newspapers in that area, just a constant pounding about uh, uh, labor bosses from back east, or the th like we're criminals or things. And, and, and as I said earlier, uh, uh, it, it's just a, con a total conjecture uh, a picture that's been painted by the uh, right-wing media and the Chamber of Commerce and different uh, entities, right-to-work committees, saying that, uh, oh, these big bosses up in D.C., they don't uh, care about the average uh, worker. And it's for, you can't be further than truth. You would not go through the strain and stress uh, that we have uh, as, as presidents of these large organizations representing people if you truly did not care and, and worry about the future of the workers in this country. That right to collective bargaining, that right to uh, try to uh, improve your pay and working conditions is uh, not only important to the union members but very important to the general public. In fact, it was, I believe, the foundation of the middle class uh, of this country. Right now, um, right now, we don't have that, and uh, what we're watching is a collapse of the middle class, and I think uh, it's important that individuals understand that they don't need to stay, stand alone, that they can stand together with others and work to improve their lot in life, and that's what they need to do. Uh, a good example of this is uh, the Walton family, which runs Walmart. Um, I believe six members of the Walton family are worth as much as the bottom 30% of all Americans combined. Uh, that inequality is uh, unseen and unheard of uh, in the history of this country. Those folks who don't want labor unions or who do not see the government role in, in helping wage earners, working folks, at least saying it's okay to organize, they really want to turn the clock back to the 1880s, 1890s. Yes, corporations really did have free reign. But the free reign they had brought much turmoil in this country. And if they wish to turn the clock back to those days, that it will happen. Because what will happen is that corporations normally do not want to pay, or businesses in general, workers a fair wage.
They're Republican controlled, and it's strictly a matter of trying to get rid of unions and weaken unions. Because under federal law, under state law, the states can choose to be a right to work state. Under federal law, the unions have to provide the same protection for workers that are not paying dues as they are for the ones that pay dues. Corporate greed. I think the corporations are making a lot of money and in the past they would negotiate fairly and be able to trickle down that money, that profit money to the employees. They develop good employees who work really hard at their jobs and that, that extra profit is not trickling down anymore. The corporation CEOs make billions of dollars, whereas before they did not, but their workers are working just as hard. The politicians are eliminating the middle class. If no one can see that, they have to be blind. Because people are fed up with the way things are going with the government and the way that large corporations and big money people are trying to destroy unions. They're trying to kill us off. And we're just not going to stand for it anymore. The economy will never get better until middle class people have money in their pockets to purchase things. And until the politicians realize that, then we're just going to be in this lull we've been in for the last 10 years. So somebody's got to get their heads out of their butts and uh, let's get this country moving. Go buy an American flag. Guess where it's made? In China. Made in India. I mean, they, they don't buy, it's everything you see, it's all made somewhere else. What about us people, the people that live in this country?